All right, guys, touch crowd back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And a phenomenal weekend of Call of Duty has concluded, but it was far from all sunshine and rainbows this weekend here in Vanguard. Lots of complaints about the format, exactly what the CDL's doing. Some followers with the game as well. Lots to dive into this afternoon. Very much into it. your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, this room's got my sons at TJ Methods. Of course, two players he's teamed with before. Last time, Scott won an event as Optic was back in 2018 with TJ on the team. Not too long before that, Methods is on their right. And of course, I'm, yeah, I'm sure Methods is eyeing up an opportunity to join Optic as a content creator when he's done with competing. But for now, Boston looks pretty good this event as well. This also, I just wanted to mention going into the Championship Sunday, as Trauma points out, I actually didn't notice this at the time. This is in the series they played up against Los Angeles Thieves. And there's kind of a bug or a feature. I'm not really sure. I guess it's a feature, to be honest, because you can just do this with the pistol. If you're, with, if you're using the pistol on these ladders, you can actually shoot with it on the ladder. You can see Sally right here, like he takes this gunfight against Kenny from Rage with a pistol and he gets gunned off the heady. But um, I mean, yeah, that's a kind of incredible challenge from, from Sally, to be honest. RC says he's crying. They make it to the grand finals. They fall short in the end, but it is just incredible how difficult phase are to beat, right? Like even yesterday when Optic won all the respawns, that series did not feel like it was um, it was comfortable for Optic by any means, right? And they were always there when they were about in these events. It's just so impressive how a phase are able to, uh, to create this consistency. But it's also great that someone can actually compete with them now. Because last year, a lot of these events felt like a foregone conclusion. As Method says, you know, a new people said COD was dead, right? So, fantastic weekend. Great to really feel the energy, not just in the venue, but just around the scene in general. Like the way Twitter was popping off and all this type of stuff. Just feels good. Clays also echoes similar opinions. Nights like these remind me why I love the core community so much. Tons of love and happiness. Need more of that coming soon indeed. So hopefully some of that can go Clays' way when, if any time, New York actually step up. If he's even still in the starting lineup. Who knows what they're going to do with this team as we progress. But, I mean, still, I'm sure lots to come on the coming days because there's been so much to talk really about some teams. Do they need to make changes? What's wrong with some of these rosters? New York is certainly one that I do not think we're going to see that team of four ever again, and, and therefore that probably leaves the question as to whether Clayston and Crimsex do remain on that team. Of course, only a few days until the CDL begins again. Major two qualifiers start just this Friday. Usually there will be a week off. We took the week off this time before the Major after after Major two in Minnesota. There will be quite a while off as this kind of the mid-season break, and I'm sure then that's when some crazy roster moves might happen, but it may well happen before then, because Clayston even says, I thought it was kind of funny. Interesting set of the day, says Bryce. Toronto currently top four, zero in six and half point. They ended up zero in seven and half point, actually. So it is possible, says Clayster, they don't have to win a half point. They haven't won a single half point so far this season. Maybe that story will change as we go on. Of course, this is Major Maniac, says one of the major concerns of this weekend as we kind of dive into some of the frustrations that were being raised, and understandably so, the state of the maps right now. At the end of the day, we've got four half point maps, four search maps, and two control maps, and there really isn't all that much time now, as I say, with just a few days left until stage two, to actually add a new map into the game. Like, some people were discussing, okay, could Berlin work for control? Can we possibly have Casablanca in there? Like, um, there was some discussion about that. I'm not honestly particularly confident that is going to happen, but what it does even more mean is that if you go to the Grand Finals, there's only 10 maps even possible to be played in a best of nine. So, um, I guess one team gets to veto. Congratulations. Not a real major advantage, though. There also was the discussion in the crowd. I believe some people were telling me that Hastro and Hector were coming out and saying, look, you know, we're not going to stand ready, these guys, trying to call out the diffuse and stuff. At the end of the day, it is like a summer element of LAN. Like, um, I think even people have talked about this in Counter-Strike. They're like, yes, people individually, like, if you're just sitting there shouting diffusing when someone's on the bomb, like, um, you know, come on, man. But, um, you know, if, if the crowd's just going to make noise or whatever and get kind of that nervous energy when someone is going for the ninja diffuse, that's kind of natural and that might be heard and understood by the pros to some degree. That's just an element of playing on LAN at times. Kenny kind of describes right here, the new headphones allow you to adjust the white noise, sadly. But even with the white noise before, you can still hear the crowd yelling. So he reckons you can actually turn down the white noise in your ear to make sure you can hear absolutely everything the crowd is doing, which um, obviously is going to help you in certain situations, especially maybe at your home event. But in fairness, wherever Optic go, it's going to be their home event for sure. This also from Looney and kind of his envoy say, lots of talk about the schedule this weekend, especially the Championship Sunday schedule, but this also was mentioned from Envoy. The fact that Los Angeles Thieves the day before, they played at the very last game of the day, an incredibly late match up against, it was Atlanta Phase they played. They lose top six in that one, or they lose the series. They get reverse swept, they come top six. But a difficult time really for them, because they had to wait 
so long after all these other games to just play their one game against um, a, a phase team that was coming in relatively hot off the loss to, to Optic not too long before that one. So difficult time really for the, the way the scheduling was being had. And also lots of talk on the Championship Sunday that Optic versus London was first. Whereas um, you could argue that really they should have done FaZe versus Toronto first to make sure you now get your top three, then do the winners finals. Because Optic theoretically came into the grand finals. Like FaZe had just played two series back to back. Optic came in warming up against their coaches for a few hours. Like um, obviously not the same. In fairness, Optic still come out to win the game one anyway. But especially given the fact that they had no winner's advantage, like it does make me feel like something has to change on this front. Like they got one half point veto. In fairness, that veto was pretty important. They got rid of the Bacage. I'm up the phase were pretty good at before. But um, if anything, coming from the losers bracket is actually an advantage as it is right now. I think so. Definitely has some strong words to say on this. Zero advantage from the winners brackets. CDL should be ashamed. Not too long ago, when MLG was running the show, they would do basically two best of fives. So if you win the first best of five, you just straight up win. And if you lose it, you have another chance, right? The team from losers has to win twice because the team from winners hasn't even lost yet, right? What's the advantage for winning that series in game five like Optic did against FaZe in that reverse sweep if they don't get any advantage again when they actually go into the grand finals? So I really feel like this would have been a much different discussion or at least uh, it would have been talked about a lot more after the fact if FaZe had gone on to win. Like if FaZe had won that map one, that had gone up like 2-0, closed out the series 5-3, to three, there'd have been a lot of talk on the timeline about the way the format works. I think the, the discussion is still there. I think this is something the CDL certainly has to look into and look into changing because I believe they don't want to change it because apparently they don't think fans understand the concept of either two best of fives or like a continuation bracket as they used to do way back in the day or just do a best of nine but give the team from winners a 1-0 advantage. That's what they did in the grand finals of champs in 2020. For some reason, they took that away. We got Optic Texas going up against Atlanta phase and a best of nine. No winner bracket advantage, Pat. Yeah, that's absurd. That's Honestly, absurd. The that's got dumb a... as Sure. That First needs to change off, now, right yeah. now. Now. First right off, now. We, need to get a now. we need to get a Lin in the chat to begin with. All right, Lin. <laughs> but after we get the Lin in the chat, yeah, I mean, I, I just think this is something that CDL just needs to look at. It, it, to me, it's absolutely ridiculous. And obviously, I have a biased opinion. I have a lot of esports and Call of Duty experience. But, dude, there's no <laughs> way in hell that someone does not understand how either a two best of five or a continuation series works. There's just no way. Like, it's the most, it's a simple ass concept to explain. Anybody can get it. Like, I, I don't know. It's absurd. I know that was their logic for why they switched to this best of nine. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it makes, makes absolutely no sense. Like all they got was a veto ban and there's only 10 maps what, in bro, the game. They, vote, they vetoed one map, Pat. One. Yeah. Was, what bro, map you vetoing? Actually, okay, hard point. Okay. I was, <laughs> good luck. Bro, I was surprised. I thought there was only nine maps. No bullshit. So I was like thinking they weren't even going to get a veto ban. I, I, I was literally caught off guard. There was more than nine maps in this game to begin with. But The other major point of discussion yesterday was the whole online LAN situation. So to my understanding, LAN nowadays is not quite like the LAN we used to have in the past. They used to just have the PS4s, connect them all together with Ethernet cables, and then boom, you've got a LAN environment. With PCs, with these PCs or the way like the game is installed on the PCs, or like just something about it, it doesn't allow that to be possible in quite the same way as when the consoles were around. Therefore, they have have to play on some sort of server separate to the game. Now, it's pretty much LAN. They're probably on like five ping maybe or something like that. And it's a fair situation as in the ping differential. Like the ping differential theoretically doesn't exist, right, between the two stations. Therefore, it shouldn't be a problem. At the same time though, like um, it's still not maybe full LAN as we used to have a few years ago. And therefore, it's still possible that the servers are kind of dodgy. We saw this weekend like a few games where the, the server would just drop out. We saw the London versus Toronto search and destroy. They play like one round, the server would crash. They'll have to go again. Not something that probably would would happen in a traditional LAN environment where the consoles probably don't have to be connected to a network at all. But we actually saw this in RCs yesterday, right? The team was basically just straight up lagging on this round. As RCs even says, lol, I lag out on LAN up 14 to 5 last round control. Guaranteed very nice indeed. That's the thing. Optic made a crazy defense, only 5 lives remaining. They really held down the lanes. But RCs effectively was forced into being AFK for that round because, uh, because of the situation as it went down. That's pretty crazy. That is not something that obviously should be happening at all. Not sure why this would happen. We can talk about the theoretically cursed setup here in the coming days, but as a result, there was some talk about this, right? And Sasha was wading into the discussion, and you can understand why Sasha would wade into such a discussion, right? Because a couple of days ago, he dropped like a 0.59, and um, of course, there was talk, well, Sasha on LAN, he's not always what he's made up to be. But now he's saying, okay, it's not actually real LAN, right? Then again, it might not be the perfect LAN environment we've had several years ago, but um, it still is better than, I guess, anything else that we have online. Assault says it's can't actually ever going to have proper LAN again, which um, doesn't really seem like it's going to be the case the way it's done right now, for whatever reason. I guess it's good enough, and the players generally 
don't talk about it, just unless there's a situation like this where a player like is obviously just lagging on LAN, which um well obviously should not be possible. So I wonder what they can do about this, if anything, as time progresses, because uh, that's the thing. Some people have even said we should go back to consoles or whatever, but um yeah, maybe they just need to look into things a little bit more closely here, because I think in fairness, as the weekend progressed, things got somewhat better in terms of the server crashes and stuff like that. Like, I feel like they figured out, it seems, after London versus Toronto shenanigans that went down on that game to Berlin search and destroy, whatever it was, that um, you know, maybe they need to do something different or play on a different server or whatever it was. They seem to figure it out for the rest of the weekends. So the game just didn't crash every single time. Esports engine, they will do that. Like, they might make mistakes. Things might not be perfect. But um, I think overall, they did a pretty great job running this event. Unfortunately, the cards they are dealt with Vanguard being the game that Vanguard is, sometimes it just crashes. Probably not all that much you can do. But I'm sure over time, and it seemed like this weekend, they figured out what prevents that happening as much as it possibly could do as time progresses. Whether they can figure out the LAN lag situation, though, that's something that I'm sure they'll have to work on for future tournaments, because of course it's not far away. We've got um, three consecutive weeks of Major 2 qualifiers coming up from this Friday through to pretty much the end of the month, and then right at the end of the month, we go to Minnesota for Major 2. So a crazy stacked month of Call of Duty, then there's the pretty much the mid-season break through the entirety of April, then at the start of May we go into the Prom Classic with all the 12 teams, plus the four best amateur teams from around the world, and then straight back into Major 3 right after that one. This also from Chrome, lots of talk about counting kills and control, discussing of course the fact that the FaZe guys made a pretty critical mistake in the final round, or well, the final but one, the penultimate round. They played against Toptic on that Tuscan control, thinking they had enough for defense, they, they did not right. But uh, the way it was last year, once they finally changed it in Cold War, was that um, basically the ticks captured was the important thing in terms of getting who gets defense for round 5, which of course is very favored right now. Right now, we're like playing for kills is mostly advantageous. Hopefully they change this one, I mean, it's rumored to be changing basically now going into major two that's exciting stuff hopefully next year right if we do get control back again in modern warfare but they might just bring back domination who knows this actually comes at launch because not really sure why this wasn't a launch feature in this game finally it seems like it is going to be changing hopefully the last time we have to worry about it this also just wanted to throw up here from gersh because a pretty good tweet not gonna lie he wanted me to bring it up on the screen i thought it was worth it shout out gersh shout out illy man this also a phenomenal clip i'll share just to close out the video here from zuma's stream he was watching this documentary i made over at the breaking point channel about a month or so ago about uh, the biggest cheating scandals in Call of Duty and he was pretty adamant that he'd never done any of this stuff and then just straight up gets caught in 4k which I thought was fantastic and just to finish out with this as well before I share that clip the final placements of the tournaments so Seattle Surge New York Sunliners Los Angeles Grillers Mutineers went out at the very first time of asking Paris and Rocker got top 8 Breach and Thieves top 6 Ultra Ravens Phase and Optic to close out the tournament so I'd very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it hit the like button tell us your YouTube gods this is a good video I don't like you should see it as well. And I'm growing the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. What is this? Biggest COD cheating scandals when pros get caught. When were pros getting caught Curious cheating? Money, free information to the you team were? Using. I wasn't doing that sh Bro, I'm a moron. I didn't know about the I never even know what the hell's happening half the time when I see these Bro, I used to get on every day. I used to ask my team, what, what, is there anything G8 today, guys? Anything G8? What's going on? What, what, do I got to make any edits to my class? And they, they say yes or no. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, free information yeah. to using this glitch. Here's Zuma showing its utility in a casual game. <laughs> I'm going to go down on purpose. Hold on. Oh, yo, one, four, all right, I'm going to start glitch. I'm going to start glitch. All right, all right. Yo, two oh, rock, oh, one push oh, up oh, our crazy. Oh, push oh, up oh, our P2. Oh, 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 I can explain. I can explain. I can explain.